welcome back. Second half of the semester. We are now down to the business end of the season. The assessment task. The marketing plan. Now, the marketing plan is going to be an interesting exercise for you. You have been preparing the thought processes, the ideas and the background information for the first half of the semester. What you're going to do now is you're going to move in to doing this in a very structured, very deliberate and very marketing centric format. So the basic rules for the marketing plan uh, they are, it is a group or individual project. There will be no difference in the marking. If you team up with other people, I assume that you have done so because that is the way you work best. That you are maxing out your opportunities by working with the strongest possible group of allies that you have. If you are not a team player and that you prefer the control that comes with the individual project, you can work on this solo. And I assume then that you are doing that because you are in your element when it's you. So pick your strength. If you're good in a team, Build a squad, work together. If you're good on your own, go solo. As far as the topic of the plan goes, you are going to be using a product. And you have three options. Option number one is a new product that you have created. This is playing the marketing plan on hard mode, on difficult mode, on I'm making this challenging for myself because I want to be challenged, stretched, and I want to work on my own idea over the course of this assessment item. Option B is the almost new product where you look at an existing product and you develop its next generation. So you are looking at something that already exists and you are saying we will release version 2.0 or version 20.0 whatever next generation is but the product already exists and there are some parameters you already have to work with. That's playing on mid to medium difficulty. Because an existing product is already there, there's a lot of information you can base your decisions on. However, because you are going to be offering an almost new product, you still have some of the challenges that come with the new product, completely new product, and you still have some of the limits that come with the existing product. The final option is to base your plan on a product that already exists, is in the marketplace and somebody else already sells, and that you pretend to be that somebody else. This is playing on medium difficulty. There is no real difficulty difference between the almost new product and the existing product insofar as both of you require both of them require you to work with the limits of an existing organization a firm that already exists has history has protocol as for which product you would like this is your choice there are no bonus points available there's no change in terms of marks based on the type of product you present, the nature of the product you present, or any other aspect around that. So, P 
pick your product, make it something that you want to write 4,000 words on. But also you can do a bit of background checking here. If you've got two or three different products you're interested in, run some Google searches, check out Google Scholar, look around, see what sort of information already exists that work with one of the best resources supporting it. Now, the rules. Assessment task is 4,000 words in length, that's plus or minus 10 percent. If, by hook, by crook, by any other means, another number exists somewhere in the copious amount of information that we have on this site, and you want to come back and say, oh, I thought the marketing plan was length X, I will just penalise you. I will deem you to be a day late for not paying attention to detail. 4,000 words because I'm standing here now on this screen in this recording. That's your deal, that's your conditions. Work with it. Next part, you must use references. I have asked you to use references in the tutorial kits. I asked you to use references in the exam. We're coming on home. We're using references on this last leg. Should you decide for whatever reason that you don't want to use references, you must understand that I will basically give you virtually no points. So here's the deal. The exercise is one that uses marketing theory. You are in introduction to marketing. You are being taught the basics of marketing planning. You are being taught a very basic marketing plan. Completing this plan will not make you a marketer. It will set you on your path to becoming one. But the plan itself is an assessment task at a university. So what is applied here is what I refer to as the it's only a model. It's a simulation game. It's not a real marketing plan. It works on the same parameters as a marketing plan. But it's an assignment. So we're going to emphasize good academic form ahead of pragmatic practicality business world because it's a university, it's a university assignment, and that's my requirements of you. Second thing is that because it's only a model, the emphasis is on the marketing, it's on your application of marketing theory, it's on your deliberate selection of ideas from marketing and using them and showing the marker that you understand marketing and you are qualifying to be able to say, I have successfully completed introductions to marketing and a marketing plan. And this is where Rule 3 comes in, the use references. It's an assessment task at a university, use references. And I want references that are to academic works, to textbooks, business books, pop culture books on marketing. You can use Wikipedia, you can use anything you find in Google Scholar that fits. You can use ProQuest, Science Direct. You can use a whole range of things. You can use blogs written by marketing people around the planet. There is a lot of data, content and intel out there. Value your own time. Value your own worth. And go find this content that already exists. Don't create it from scratch. Deliver it with reference, and you will be finding it a lot easier to do this assessment task. However, references require you to start thinking, reading, and applying, and adapting other people's ideas. So there's two parts to that that need to be, rem you need to be reminded about, and that is don't use direct quotes, and do acknowledge your sources. 
Do not beg, borrow, plagiarize, or steal. Use an attribute appropriately. So, the summary version of this is, this is an assignment, and I, keep, I go over this repeatedly because the number of times I'll have people come back and say, oh yeah, I didn't treat it as an assignment, I treated it as a practical problem. I'm like, well, you did it wrong. Assessment, it's an assignment. Treat it as an assignment. Demonstrate your marketing skills, show your technique, demonstrate your grasp of marketing knowledge, make it work. Okay, so in terms of what a marketing plan is for its component parts, a marketing plan is the end of a planning process. It is the document you write up to go and demonstrate the outcomes of your planning. Consequently, to do a marketing plan, you need to do the marketing planning. What you see is what a classic stock standard plan looks like and the various aspects which report back the summary findings. For you, these are your requirements. I am reducing, because this is an academic exercise in a for introductory unit in a disciplinary area, you're getting the shorter simulated variant of the plan. So what you have in here, basically, is you have the covering page and an introduction. The introduction, basically, is pretty short, probably the least important part of the entire document. You will then move through a sequence of reports. And these are each short reports where you're going to tell me a specific piece of information in each of these short reports. Each of these elements will be discussed in detail in terms of what I want from those reports, but you must understand that they are all linked. The background to the organisation is going to connect to its strengths, its weaknesses, its opportunities, its threats. Those, the reporting on what it's good at, what it's weak at, where it could go in the market and what it's going to watch for, will connect to the external analysis which starts talking about the political, economic, socio-economic and technological environment that the firm operates in. But you can't answer the pest or the spots, you can't present that if you don't know about the background of the organisation. Once you've laid out the results of your analysis and you've reported those results of the spot and the pest, you're going to talk about the customers. That is who you want to be targeting with your product. When you have identified a group of customers, a single market segment, just the one, you only need one. And I would like some specifics and details here. Once you know who you are targeting, this greatly improves the likelihood that you are going to be able to say who else is currently targeting that customer with an offer that is similar to yours. So you'll be able to report up about the competitors. Moving on from that, now you know what your firm's about, what it does well, what the environment looks like, who you want as a market, who you're up against in that market, we can start talking about how you're going to address that situation. So the smart objectives kick into gear here. And these are your marketing objectives. These are the elements where you start talking about what you plan on doing and when you lay out these objectives, you may find it useful to go back and cross-check them against the analysis, against the SWOT. Are you attempting to achieve something in an area that you are strong? Are you attempting to achieve something in an area that you are weak? Are you capitalising on an opportunity or are you fending off a threat? What is it that you are doing with your objectives? How does that link back to the SWOT? From there, how does that integrate with the background of the firm or what 
who you're targeting as customers, or if you're doing the, say, defending a weakness against the threats, you're going to talk a lot about your competitor there. So you need to make certain that your details on your competitor match up with what your objectives are. Now at this point, in the semester, you have most of the theories and ideas and frameworks you need in order to address these elements. You have studied strategy. There's a chapter on it. You've done market research. You have done positioning. You have done segmentation. You have looked at consumer behavior. Pick your product, work through your existing knowledge base, get some of this stuff, and get the notes down sooner rather than later. Get on and make this happen for you, because you're going to find it really fun to be sitting there in a marketing class that's talking about price, product, promotion, and place, with your product in mind, nailed down and embedded, your customer target in mind, nailed down and embedded, so you know what what you're offering, who you're offering it to, and then we start talking in depth as to the guts of the exercise, the marketing mix, and we're going to go through these week by week. You get to have a lot more fun if you know what it is you want to do, what you're offering, how you're going to do it, if you've got that nailed down now before we hit the mix weeks. So, let's talk about these parts individually. First thing, all of the parts have to be there. That's it. There's no, oh, I think I won't cover section X because that's just a dumb idea. You will get penalized. I will not treat your plan kindly and I will be disappointed in you and you don't want that. That's bad. So, from the top, first thing, there will be a covering page. It will just be plain, like, it's just a page. Tell me who you are, who's in your group, and the topic of the plan, the product name, or what it is the plan's about. There are enough students who will go out and not tell me who's in their group for me to get really frustrated by that. This compulsory important. Now, the word count starts here. First thing, introduction. Ben, tell me, answer these questions. What's in the plan? What's the context of the plan? Is it a new product? Is it an existing product? What is it? Which one are we, which box are we playing in? Is it a new product? Old product? Existing product based? Existing product adapted, existing product in its next iteration. Give me that context. That is the summary I need. Background. What's the firm about? Who are they? Where they're from? What do they do? What's their size? What's their history? What's their situation? Uh, we're talking about a firm that is a veritable mainstay of the industry and has been there since the industry started and doesn't look like going anywhere anytime soon. Are we talking about a sudden startup that's come out of nowhere just to clean house on an existing industry? Are we talking about someone who created their own sector by the product that they offer being so interesting that they are the ones who dictate the terms? What's the story? Who are they? What's the detail? Where's the market they operate in? What's the geographic operational area? Just give me some context to work with you. All right, it's findings time. How SWOT and PEST work is that you, as the writers of this plan, will do an analysis. You will report the findings of that analysis in summary format. You've got 500 words to report both sections. Do not skip one, do not favor one over the other. People do, it ends badly for them, so don't end badly for yourself. 
Don't deliberately sabotage your work. Be fair, be reasonable, land it. But understand that you are also reporting the outcomes because the analysis that you do in terms of strengths, weakness, opportunity and threat, those notes will help you craft later sections of the paper. So it's important for you and to you to step through these processes and think about the consequences and hang on to the notes. And if you work as a team, make certain these notes can be passed around the group so that everyone knows that if your company's got a strength in a particular area, that you work to it. And if it's got a weakness, you defend for it. And if there is an opportunity, you're trying to capitalize on it. And if there's a threat, you're trying to defend against it. Now, the customers and competitors, I'm going to spend a few more words here. I've actually changed this from last year, so don't use old notes. Also, that's the kind of tactic if you submit last year's assignment. I'm very, very bored. And that's bad for you. Very bad for you. Now, what you're going to do with customers and competitors is you're going to tell me the answer to this story. Who is your main customer? What segmentation basis are you going to use? And I recommend using multiple, so go put a combination of moves together. Segmentation has been the weak point thus far this semester. It is the point I think you need to make certain that you give yourself the most time to consider. You are needing to t describe people. At the end of a segmentation strategy, I should be able to have a picture in my mind of the type of consumer you want using your product. So that it needs to be pretty specific. I need to, to be able to say, who is this person? Where would I find them? What is interesting about my product to them? How do I communicate that? And the benefits, so there's three parts here. There's the segmentation. What's your technique you're going to use to do segmentation? What aspects of consumer behavior are useful here, both naming them and applying them? And what benefits are you going to offer to this group? What's in it for them to buy your product? Competitors. This is important. You are not so unique that there is nobody else fighting for the money your consumer would be spending. So you need to be able to tell me who else is in the, the game, who's your main opponent, who do you have to worry about. So you want to be looking at this, you want to do this by scanning the environment to look up, understand how to do that. You will report back to me who the opposition is, how you are positioned compared to them, how does the market see you, how do you see yourself? Are you deliberately positioning yourself as the alternative, the plucky competitive alternative, where number two, we try harder? Or are you positioning yourself as the antithesis, the opponent, the opposite of the people that you stand for everything your opponent doesn't. The thing you need to be able to answer is, what do you do better? What do they do better than you do? What do you do better than they? So, this is a competitive head-to-head. -head. If you put in two products side by side, one of them does something better than the other, find out which is which. Know it, because you're going to need that. This may link back to your weaknesses. This may link back to your threats. But it will also link forward. What you do better than your opponent should be one of the things you emphasize in the marketing mix. So you need to know what are the conditions. What do you do better? What are they offering? Where are they offering? What are they charging? Where are you beating them on those points? 
And if you are not beating your opponent on one or more of those points, then your plan basically needs to be how you are going to turn around from being the god-awful alternative to being superior on one to four of those points. So you need to know who you're up against, what do they do, how do you compare, because that's going to determine a bunch of your moves. Alright, smart objectives. The objectives is plural here, but really, you've got so few words. Give yourself a one, preferably, two if you must, but no more than three objectives. And make certain the objectives connect. Connect, if you're doing multiple objectives, make certain the objectives connect with each other. If you're doing any number, if you're doing between one, two, or three, the objectives must make sense to the context you have just provided. The objectives, if anything, are almost like the mini conclusion. By the time I've read this first half of your paper, this is the mid-season cliffhanger. This is the point where it's, we've talked about the context of the organisation, its product, the competitors, the customers. Now you are going to say, this is what we're going to set out to do with the second half of this plan. So you've got a short amount of words to break it down. You've got a very clear mantra. And the thing is, that mantra, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time framed, you can't use them as dot points and subheadings. I need to look over your objectives and say, yes, that is specific, yes, that could be measured, yes, you could attain that. And if you've got those first three down, then I'm more than likely going to say, yep, that's realistic. When is it going to have taken place? Don't just report it, do it, use it. Now the Smart Objective section, you are also still required to use references. And if you cannot figure out that there's a bunch of marketing papers out there that talk about setting objectives, and there's a bunch of pre-existing objectives that can be found in a variety of marketing sources, come on, cut me some slack, work with me here. If you've got an objective of growth, go look up. What have people written about growth objectives? What sort of growth objectives are there? You can set someone else's objective here. You can set a growth objective and put, oh, it's a growth objective of X amount percent over Y months, and reference another marketing author. Because they might have suggested this is a good way of handling. You know, standard industry rates are X growth over Y time frame, using Z tactic, there's your citation, there's your reference. Don't think you have to create everything from scratch. Do not believe at this point in the plan you are the only person who have ever tried considering setting up marketing objectives. Go look for the knowledge that is around you, build upon it, contribute back to it later. But right now, recognize that you are a rookie in a debut season, it's okay to ask for help and get guidance from existing and experienced information. So, the first half of the plan culminates at the objectives and you basically reach a crescendo point. You have told me what you're going to do next. Now, what you need to do next is you need to deliver. And this is where we're going to split the pack between those who pass, those who succeed, and those who bank the high distinctions. A large slice of the marks will be gained or lost because you will have set context, scenario, 
background and then the objectives. And if you don't deliver on what you have promised, then you have done marketing badly and you will not be rewarded. So this is the critical part. You've set the scene, it's your show. You've made the promise in the objectives. Now you have to deliver. And we're gonna show you how. The marketing variable section is the big industrial heavy section. It is 1600 words. You can use the classic marketing mix, McCarthy 1960, the modern marketing mix of Dev and Schultz 2005, the seven P's from services marketing, which there are a few authors who can do that, but this would be a Solomon 2011 for you. You may, if you feel so inclined, look at the marketing mix matrix, which is my Dan 2010, 2011. The mix matrix is worth looking at, but there are 16 elements that you would apply in 1600 words. So, unless you fancy some concise, precise, and supported, you may want to take the mix and see the or four P's and have a little more room to work with. The keys out of this, though, is each element of the mix is equally important. This is why you have had exam questions that were equally weighted, why your tutorial kits were equally important, why the number four has been so recurrent in here that basically we're almost a 16-wheeler. The mix is going to be a question of balance and interconnection. So. This is the second half of the ship. This is what we're going to focus on to the end of the semester. The first cat off the rank is product. Now I will talk to the McCarthy 1960 classic marketing mix. The SIVA I can talk to later, but I'm not going to address it specifically in here. Product. What it is that you are offering. What are the benefits? What are the features? Do use the core, actual, and augmented. Make certain that you understand what it is that we buy in terms of the value we receive. Do we buy hope? Do we buy hope? Do we buy heartbreak? Do we buy achievement or frustration? Do we buy beauty? Do we buy hatred? Do we buy fear? Do we buy repulsion? Do we, what is it that's core? You just go, go through a movie library to see that we can sell fear, disgust, revulsion, love, hope, humor, terror, and out of order. We can sell all of these things. These are core features. These are things that are in the heart of the product. Core is what the customer is going to get out of using your product. Actual is the product that you are presenting to them. And augmented is the extensions around that. The reputation, the brand, the other aspects. But you need to be able to describe this. But you also in product need to be thinking about a couple of other aspects. When you are writing this up, you're going to need to make some notes about your product. And you need to be looking at your product in terms of how easy is it to ship? 
because that will influence distribution. How expensive are the core component parts? Because that will determine price. How good are the component parts? What's the, what's the inherent quality? That will determine perhaps distribution, the outlets, perhaps price. How easy is it to, to explain what the product does? Because that will determine promotion. The nature of the product should be considered for how it will influence, adjust, and impact on the other three elements of the marketing mix. So it's not just enough here to be thinking, how does it work? Just in terms of the product by itself. You need to be thinking about how does this sit into the mix in terms of the impact it has on the other parts. So the second element is price. What does it cost the consumer to buy, to use, to consume your product? Now price is not just the money, but the money is important. In this, I am not asking you to show me an appendices worth of cost-benefit analysis and calculations. I kind of would be, it'd be neat if you could actually put a dollar sign value on your product. That's kind of neat, nifty, cool and stuff. But even that's not that compulsory. What is absolutely compulsory is to understand what the financial price is and what that does in terms of communicating the worth of your product. If your product is a high quality, it has luxurious parts, it has high quality parts, does the price support the value of the product? Is the product going to be perceived as high quality? Or will the inherent nature of the quality of the product be undercut by a perception that, well, if it's that cheap, it can't be good? The second aspect on this is that you need to be thinking about the non-financial costs involved in the use and adopting of the product. The non-financial costs in particular are going to be critical around issues such as time. How long does it take someone to consume your product? Risk. Will it work properly first time, every time? Learning, effort. The first time you start using a new product, say a brand new smartphone, there's a sharp learning curve. Embarrassment. Is the product is the risk of the product failing going to put people off because they don't want to be seen to be foolish in the eyes of their friends? Uh, is it, are you selling a product that people could be embarrassed about? Are you selling a product that people want, need, but can't necessarily bring themselves to um, be seen in public using? So what are the financial costs? What, what's the money issue involved? So, price, one of the traps in price that you need to be aware of is either ignoring financial or non-financial, but you need to be considering, when we go through this, it's not just about the dollar sign on the price tag, it's about the relative worth. Is it expensive and therefore showy and flashy, and that can be a benefit? Luxury brands that communicate, look at me, I'm made, I'm set up, versus luxury brands that people can go, wow, oh, you spent money on that. Is there going to be social approval for spending a high amount of money on a product or a low amount of money? What is it worth to the end user versus what will it cost them? And that's the key. You are talking about the costs from the perspective of the consumer. Think consumer-centric, what will it cost them? And that is the price that they must pay. Alright, 
Promotion. If you came to marketing believing that all we were was advertising, finally, you are at the bit that you think is the important stuff. In terms of this marketing plan and your assessment requirements, you are going to describe targets, but you are not required to create copy. You haven't been taught how to, therefore you're not required to. You don't have to design an ad, build a slogan, you don't have to do any of that. But you have to tell me which of the techniques would you like. How do you want to talk to the markets? And when you talk to the markets, will you do it in a manner that lets the market talk back? Social media is a two-way platform. If you communicate to the market, the market can communicate right back at you. So do you want the market silent or do you want the market engaged? The other aspect of promotion that you need to be considering is the message that is sent by your product in terms of its use, the message that is sent by your product in terms of its price, and the message sent by your product in terms of where you can buy it, is that consistent with the message that you are putting into the advertisements and the promotion? The critical aspect in all of marketing communication is to ensure that you provide a consistent message. Because consistency is worth more than opportunism. And finally, the thing that you need to be considering here is what communications platform, what elements of the promotion mix will best address your audience. Your customer is pre-specified. You have locked that in back early in this draft. So you need to make certain that your communications channel talks to that audience. If your audience is technophobic, people who don't have internet access, don't tell me you're going to have a Facebook page. I will be annoyed that you weren't paying attention. If your audience is hard, if at this point you're going, but I don't, where, where do I find my audience? And you're having some issues on that front, then perhaps you haven't defined your audience clearly enough. So, promotion is, in this assessment exercise, where you draw together more of the threads from the other elements. Where you talk about, this is how we would convey a message to support the experience associated with the product. This is how we would convey a message that would work with the distribution channel we've selected. This is how our message would encourage people that the price we're charging, the costs they're incurring, are worthwhile. Promotion must support the other elements. The fourth part is the place, the where, how someone gets to your product. Place is the mission critical. It's not the glamorous, but it's one of the most important. The product is the critical thing. Without something to sell, you have nothing to offer. But if nobody can get to your product, Effectively, you have nothing to sell. So if you have to prioritize, you prioritize product, place, price, promotion. You put promotion last because promotion can be done in part through user experience, through word of mouth. You can take promotion out of play, you can have it banned and still be functional. You take down somebody's distribution channel and they are in significant trouble. So the question is, how does the offer get to the market so that the market can find it to be a useful solution? And this in the AMA definition is the whole deliver offerings that have value. In the CIM, this is the anticipate and satisfy. 
So here what you need to be looking at and thinking about is how do you get to your audience? All right, the final aspect in place that you need to consider. This is something that I teach that you may have had difficulty finding some of this support material in it. Um, but if you look at the SIVA papers and access, can the customer reach the value offer that you are making with your product? Do they need to be somewhere specific for the value to take place? Now this is something very important to consider in terms of where is the product consumed? Is it consumed by yourself with others? Go back to consumer behaviour. Go back to the contexts, the purchase contexts. Go back to the notion of whether the situational factors are important in the decision. Look at these situational factors as distribution and place issues. If the product needs to be consumed with others and with other people around you, that's a distribution challenge. You must get this product to where people are. If the product is to be consumed without others, can it be purchased in front of others? In which case, if it can, then your challenge is buy this but consume it privately versus buy this privately, consume it privately. Think through the issues around your product in terms of where it needs to be in order to be used for the greatest benefit for your consumer. Okay, final, final element. The conclusion. Whereupon you say, this plan will achieve X by Y date, and this is achievable because justification. Yes, you need a reference in the conclusion. You also need references all throughout the marketing mix, but that's kind of the easiest part in the entire game to get hold of references. Conclusion What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Can it be done? Can it be done? It's a critical statement. Alright, a couple of technical things to talk you through now. The word counts. These are boundaries. These are also a sort of sense of what's worth what in the paper. If you spend most of your paper on the introduction, background, conclusion, you are going to lose marks because you deserve everything that happens to you because you haven't read the instructions. Read the instructions. It's good. They help. The guidelines and boundaries here, the other thing you must be very, very aware of is I will penalise people for being below the required word length. When I say there's a word length, you've got to be plus or minus 10% on it. You bank something at 3,599, I will find you 10%. I will find you a grade barrier. You will not be able to achieve whatever grade it was you scored for what the words you put down on page. You will get knocked down to the next bracket below you because you didn't play within the word count. If you are struggling to make your word count, then you are not doing this assignment well. If you are finding that you have nothing to say, and that you can't possibly get to the lofty heights of 3,600 words, you haven't thought it through enough, you haven't used enough support, you need to go off and have another go at it. If you find that there are too many words, then you're not focused enough, you perhaps have too many objectives, or too many, your segment is too big, your market is too large, come back and refine. This is a challenge. The word length parameters are a feature. It is intentionally designed this way. But also look at these numbers for a second. For 
4,000 words is something that most of you wrote for 10 points over two weeks in two tutorial kits. A thousand words is what the last two tutorial kits were worth. 250 words is what a kit, an answer to a question in a kit was worth. 500 words is twice that. These are things you can achieve. These are numbers that you have shown to be capable of doing. So you got this. You got this. Just relax. Answer the questions that need to be answered. Structure the words and deliver within the parameters. Okay. The final aspect to this is the process and the procedures. There is a stepwise guide for you to read. This pre-record will stop here, but this process and procedure is important for you to read through. It is there for you to read because it is something where you need to actually then take notes and plan and think through how am I undertaking this, when am I undertaking this. Be specific, measurable, and it will be attainable and realistic. You have a finite amount of time between hearing this message and the assessment task being due. Divide that by the task you need to undertake. Set yourself deadlines. Set yourself goals. Give yourself a parameter that says, have I achieved this goal by this date? Stick to those guidelines. Be deliberate about what you're doing. It is a task that can be done. It is a task that you can achieve. The timing has been set deliberately so that you will move swiftly through this content because the groundwork that you have needed to learn to make these decisions has been covered. You are skilled up. You now need to have those skills applied. So what you want to do is you want to remember chapters one to six, one to five were on the exam, they now come back because you have learnt from them. They were there and tested so that the fundamental principles that you need to use for your decision making have been worked through, focused on and taken seriously. The final note, final thing I will say is Conduct yourself ethically in this marketing plan. Ethics and law are important. Give due consideration to the laws that govern your products because you have shown you are very, very capable and skilled people when it comes to assessing the legal implications around other people's products. Do so with your own. Be that savvy, be that smart. Similarly, be ethical. You have spoken in two assessment tasks now about the ethics of others, the ethical conduct of organisations and businesses. Be ethical in your decisions, in your target markets you select, in the products you choose, in the way that you conduct, the way that you think through how your organisation is going to conduct itself. Be Ethical. Hold yourself to the judgment and the standards that you have held others in this course. So be legal, be ethical, be smart, be specific, be measurable, be attainable, be realistic, be timetabled, and you will do well.